So welcome to Set Apart Kingdom Ministries. I have some wonderful guests with me, and we're going to discuss today Dance Minister Arise, which is my book on the, the call and being chosen to dance. So with me, I have, you guys to just introduce yourselves. My name is Devon Lasanga. My name is Karen Lasanga. I'm Amira Lasanga. And so we are coming together to present to you uh, Jesus through the dance. So today we're going to talk a little bit about the book and about what it means to be called and chosen as a dance minister. So before we get started, we're just going to pray. So Father, we come before your presence and thank you for this opportunity again, Lord God, just to connect, Father, and just to speak about who you are in the dance, Lord God, as we take this call, not just dance, but just we take this call to life as a believer as, as a gift, Lord God, and we just bless the hearers, Lord God, and we just want to be used, Lord God, to be your hands, feet, and your mouth in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So today, guys, when we met, so we met several years ago when um, I came to the church that they were at, and I became, we, where we became acquainted through dance ministry. It was a, a lot of shifts in the dance, so I one point I became the dance ministry assistant and you will hear from the dance ministry um, leader that was at the time. She will also be in an interview. We were interviewed together as well. But I just want you to hear the different um, opinions and the different things that their experiences as a dance minister. So then I became at that time the dance leader and we begin to talk about prophetic dance. So I do want to start with prophetic dance ministry because at that time, had you guys had any experience with prophetic dance? No, I hadn't had any experience yet. Could one of you share, uh, or a few of you share what it was like for you in the beginning? In the beginning, I was hesitant for prophetic dance because it's really a leap of faith, letting God speak through you, through his movements, and through what he's telling you to move through. It was really different from what I've ever done because most of the things that we've done is really structured, like do this, do that, be technical, which that type of dance is technical, but you're hearing from God. So it was a different type of faith. You have to be spiritual within so God can speak through you through the movements, which was different for me. But it was a great experience, and I'm glad that you taught us that. I'm so glad to have been a part with, of, you know, what God was doing in that time and still doing. Anybody else experience? Yeah, like what Devine said, like you kind of feel like, like God leads you when you're dancing, so like it's kind of moved by your faith. Yeah, good. I think at first it was it was hard for me because I knew that I needed to go to God for Him to give me what I needed for it. But after after a while and after we kept doing it, I actually loved prophetically dancing because like mostly like with the songs that we had and like it was like you had a spirit to be like okay Karen you're gonna do this one and I knew that that was God telling me that I needed to do this one it was God telling me that he was gonna push me through that song and give me every move and I remember prophetically dancing with Divine and it was crazy because it was like we would do we wouldn't know because you know we were prophetically dancing but we would do the same things and it would just flow through us like, you know, because we already have a connection of being sisters, mm -hmm. but then God gave it to us while we were dancing as well. That's powerful. That's powerful. So as I was listening to each one of them share their experience, they both say, all of them said it, you know, it, it was new. So there was a little hesitancy there. But as they connected with the Holy Ghost and allowing the Lord to lead them, then they were able to execute movements. And that's the thing about prophetic dance. I want to go to that right now because I have a chapter of talking about in chapter nine, different types of dances. And one of the ones that is listed in this book is about prophetic dance. And I say that I'm very, uh, choreography can be, uh, choreographed pieces can be prophetic dances as well. But we were talking about flowing with, with God through his movement. So we would believe because we were spending time with the Lord and spending time in practice. And sometimes our practices looked where we were, we were just in being worship, just worshiping in the beginning. And sometimes mo a lot of times we would do movement and exercises, but even in that God was forming unity because unity is so key. When you are a dance ministry team, you have to be on one accord because that's what the Bible talks about being on one accord. And as I wrote about prophetic dance, 
it's one of the scriptures I used was, but one who prophesies strengthens others, encourages them, and comforts them. When we are we are ministering under the unction of the Holy Spirit when we do dance prophetically. We are his hands, his feet on this earth. God can choose whoever he wants to use. But the fact is, if you have been called and chosen to be a dance minister, then you are and avail yourself to the Lord and his leading. You are using, I mean, things can happen. Portals can open. Uh, healings can take place. Deliverances can take place. It's so much within the scope of the dance minister availing themselves to the Lord and prophetically dancing that brings God's kingdom on the earth. Another thing I wanted to ask you all about being um, dancing, can you talk about those times that you you didn't even want to come? You didn't want to practice, you didn't want to dance, you and how you pushed past that to, to be able to execute? I kind of felt like, I know there was some times where I was just, I would be like, dang, I don't really want to dance today, you know, or I don't really feel feel like it. But I knew that I had already made an obligation to God to serve him. And I knew that was how he wanted me to serve him at that time and where I was at. So I knew that even if I didn't want to, I already made an obligation, not only to God, but to my team as well, mm -hmm. to be there. So I did what I, you know, did what God wanted me. I think it takes discipline sometimes. Certain things, it's just not what you want to do. It's not about limitation, but it's about telling yourself, this is what I need to do in order to move in my relationship with God. And sometimes you don't want to do things, but you know that that's the way that God wants you to move, and you have to listen to Him. I think in times like that, you really have to pray. And then when you put the worship music on, and like you're really in the dance practice, then things just change, and you that feeling goes away. So I think sometimes it could be like the devil trying to hold you back, but you have to push through that sometimes. Because there's a difference between not being called and just sometimes not wanting to do things. That's good. Yeah, like what Divine said, like you just have to like let it be your faith. Like even if you don't want to do it, like it's important for your like to grow your faith and everything. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Wow, gosh, they said a lot of master keys. I mean, from servanthood to not to being disciplined to faith. Gosh, listen to that. Servanthood, discipline, and faith. Those are so big because if we are called in any capacity, whether you are a dance minister or not, then as a believer in Jesus Christ, as a as the light of the world, then we are servants. That that that's who we are. We serve the King, the Messiah. That's what we do with every part of us, right? We're supposed to be whether you are called to preach, dance, to sing, whatever, to be in the marketplace, whatever it is, we are servants and friends of God. So she talked about serving. Devon talked about discipline. Discipline is so key in any area of our lives. So this book here is not only about, for it is for the dance minister, but it's also for the believer in Jesus because it, you can see keys in here that will also unlock you as whatever capacity you're working in or whatever capacity you're serving in or wherever you're called to. These are keys that the master gave us and we are, we, we use them. We use them in everyday life. Be discipline, it keeps coming back to me. Being disciplined in everything, whether you're in school, uh, they are all in school in, in different levels and different grades, but they know that even in discipline within their studies, it that's big. It, we have to use all these. And faith, Without faith, it's impossible. We can't do anything without faith. God wants us to come. He wants us to be faith-filled. Faith That's who we are. He wants us to be faith-filled, and we, he wants us to move by faith. Because if we if we can't see it, right? We do. We walk by faith and not by sight. That's what the Word of God tells us. So we are moving. Even as dance ministers, back to that, we move in as prophetic dance ministers Sometimes we don't even know that the move is going to come out. They talked about that experience as sisters and that unity and how they tapped into God together. And they were doing the same moves and didn't even know it. I've seen it happen in my life. I've seen it happen in many dance ministers. So I, we just want to continue to encourage you that if you are in a place where you may not want to dance, but you know you're called to dance, remember the reason why you were sent to dance because you're sent why you were called to dance, why you was chosen to dance. Go back to the throne room, hear from God and let God 
allow, let God to speak to your spirit and just worship. She just said, divine said, even as she worshiped, things begin to happen. Then, then you begin to get into, okay, it's not about me. It's not about Lakeisha. It's not about Karen. It's not about Amir. It's not about divine, but it's about the flow of the Holy Ghost. So I hope this is helping you. I also wanted to talk to you all about when it was time. When did you feel the shift? When did you feel the transition from just being a dance minister to saying, I mean, just being a dancer to becoming a dance minister? Do you all remember that when it shifted for you? Honestly, I do remember it. And it was really you. I don't know how to describe it, but I remember dancing. And then once we started, um, you had, sorry, during our practices, you had made us, you know, we would all sit down together and we would all like read the Bible or like talk about different things about dance ministry. And I, I understood it more because of what we had together and more mm -hmm. learning about it. It wasn't just us dancing. It was really a craft that we wanted to learn mm -hmm. and understand. And you taught us that. So, you know, it was while we would also get that, then I would go into my dancing more and I would understand more things. We used to use more different things that we didn't understand mm -hmm. at first, but God gave to you to give to us. And it was helpful for me to understand that. And that's when I really got into my zone of mm -hmm. becoming a dance minister because it wasn't just me dancing. Mm -hmm. It was me understanding what, I was doing and what I was doing for other people as well. Well, what God was doing mm -hmm. for other people as well. Yeah, like what you said, like it was kind of a formation, like when you gave us like scriptures and everything, like it was a better understanding of like not just dancing, but like the spiritual of it. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and coming off of what Karen said as well, it wasn't just I'm doing this for myself, I'm doing this for show, I'm doing this. For the glory of God unto God mm. and when you realize that everything changes mm. so not seeing you're not doing this for the people you're not doing this in the church but you're doing this to honor God mm. and to show his praises and to minister to other people in the ministry and then also teaching that we are creatures in our own way mm. so we're preaching in a different way by dancing and not just by using our hands mm. oh, that's, oh, oh, that's powerful that is so God. I, I feel God moving in the midst of, of this. I just feel the peace of God. And I, I feel like God is being pleased with us sharing this to y'all. And wherever you are, I'm, I pray that you'll just listen to it again because this is real. This We didn't even, we didn't um, come up with a stage we like the, for this moment as far as what we were going to specifically say. We talked a little bit about some things, but this is from the heart of true believers into what it was like for them. One of the things I want to share, and this is going to be a funny one for you all. So there were times where we talked about, I was big on getting there on time and wearing, having your garments pressed and everything. Mm -hmm. So that was a task for all of us. Can anybody talk about that? Um, we, were, <laughs> we were always late. And our garments were not pressed. <laughs> not all the time. We came in the morning ready to press our our garments at church. So I think <laughs> like we have to iron it the best. <laughs> I think Miss Akija was heavy on that our garments were kind of like as a vessel to show other people and it was important. And we didn't learn that until probably like the end of when we started dancing because we were just like um, stuff everything in our bags yeah. and like try to press it out while we got there. It's like you would tell us and I understood it, <laughs> but I wasn't putting it into practice. So, you know, well, honestly, I don't want to put blame, <laughs> but some people, you know, just used to throw the garments in the bag. So, do that. so then, you know, it kind of just, yeah, okay. Yeah. And we were in a rush. We didn't organized the way that we needed to. But I understand why that's such an important factor mm -hmm. because the garments are what we wear when we're supposed to be, you know, God is supposed to be giving what we need to his people. We're supposed to, like you said, we're like another preacher, you know, in mm -hmm. our different way. Mm -hmm. And you don't see a preacher come on stage wearing like sweatpants 
or something, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So what we have on is a reflection of what God wants us to be. That's why picking out our colors, mm-hmm. what we had on, you know, everything. It was what God gave us. It wasn't, oh, because, you know, we went to match, you know, mm-hmm. what everyone else had on or not. We had, we had really thought about, you know, what colors we were going to put mm-hmm. on, what was important, what flags we were using. Mm-hmm. It wasn't something that we just picked the morning of. We thought about it, you know. Mm-hmm. We let God move through us. Yes, and that's so key because I remember a time when I would be like, you know, they were looking to me as a leader, what colors, what colors, but then I was like, okay, no, you guys hear from God because we also did prophetic activations in our dance ministry. So they, they heard from God, and their parents are believers, and they are strong um, prayer warriors. So they knew the voice of God, and they just, they began to tell us, okay, so I asked them, what color are we wearing for Sunday? And then they would hear from heaven and share what color we were wearing. It wasn't just one. It was unity. It truly was a group. It was a group um, effort in everything that we did. I mean, it's so big. I have also in this book, I also talk about colors and what they meant in garments. If you look at chapter 7, let's go to chapter 7. I just want to read a little bit of chapter 7 to you about colors. I mean, and not just colors. Colors is in chapter 6, but uh, garments. So in the garments, and this is chapter 7, in the garments of his sons to minister in the priest's office. When we are dance ministers, ministers of the gospel, we are the hands and feet of our Lord and Savior. As a result, we are assigned to present him with every part of us, including the selection of garments and the colors we wear. Our Lord and Savior is strategic and precise with what he wants his dance ministers to wear. He did it in the Bible many times when he told the, the, the uh, priest what to give the, the um, Aaron, what, what stones and what to put in. I don't have the specifics in it, but it was in Exodus. It talks about where God was specific on what to put on his priest, what, how he wanted the temple. I mean, it, he was strategic on that. And that is the same way I feel as we are throne room worshipers. We are committed to, as should be committed to, what is it that we are saying in this hour to God? I mean, what is it that God wants to say to his people and what is it that he wants to do? So if he has, if we have a gold or we're using a gold um, banner or billow, his glory, we're representing the kingdom, the God's glory in the earthly realm. And I do believe that some of the colors and what they represent, that's what God is going to do in that moment. So God's Shekinah glory will fall into place. I'm believing this because it's by faith. It's Amir said, faith is with, without faith, it's impossible to believe God, I mean, to, it's impossible for us to move by God's, his will for our lives. Without faith, it's impossible. We can't do it without faith. So as we're putting on these colors, we believe by faith that God is going to do. We are wearing joy, joy, I mean, yellow. Joy is, is a color of yellow. So we're going to bring joy and that people are going to feel joy. They're um, the heaviness of weeping and joy for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. That's what we're believing, that we're not just wearing garments to wear garments, but that they are speaking God's heart for his people. So is there anything else that you all would like to share before we um, wrap up this session? Honestly, I would say that dancing, they've shown me the dance is honestly incredible. Mm-hmm. I'm still doing it now, but honestly, taking every Sunday and doing it is It really helps in my spiritual life. And honestly, taking the time beforehand, before I dance, to just read the Bible and pray, that's really important. So when you go that Sunday morning and dance, you let those things flow out of you so people can get those healings and those blessings and also God can flow through you, which is really important. So just spending time with God um, outside of dance or even playing worship music at home in your bedroom a long time and just dancing on your own really helps me and not not just the dance ministry, but also just your spiritual life as well. I want to, um, if anybody, before anybody else said, I want to ask you guys to speak prophetically, individually, to somebody out there, a word, just release it over their life as, as a dance minister or a believer that may be struggling in the call of their life. Whoever wants to go first, if you could just look into the camera and just speak a word of encouragement and life to someone. Just do it. Don't wait. God has um, a plan for you, and you can't make excuses in your life because things aren't going how you want it. If God is calling you to do it, just do it. Mm -hmm. It's hard to, 
understand what God wants for you sometimes. And it's hard sometimes to obey God when you know it's something that is out of your comfort zone. But sometimes you have to get uncomfortable to get comfortable with God. And yeah, it might be hard and you might feel like, oh, I don't know if I should keep doing it or to continue doing it. Or if you haven't even started, but you know that it's something that's been sitting heavy on your heart, just go for it. God is going to lead you through everything. Even if you feel like, oh, I'm not a good dancer. It's not about how you feel because if God is moving through you and if God has called you, then that's what's needed for your life. And you never know what dancing can do for you because it's definitely done a lot for me and my sisters. And just like don't let anything hold you back while dancing and kind of just like let God go through you while dancing and kind of um, just like really reach into your like faith and kind of like gain more things about it. So. Amen. I want to thank each one of you ladies individually and collectively for just sharing your heart and being transparent. And we want to thank you for listening in. And we hope that you will put this on repeat and just listen to it over and over and be encouraged. And I'll, I heard from the, what I heard them say is don't help, be held back and go for it. So until next time, we bless, we bless you. We speak blessings. Amen. 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 Amen.